Now, the New York Times, God love them, um, for finding new ways to get crazier and crazier. I've got to say, I've, I, I've been meaning to say this for a while, but I'm go with me on a journey here. There's a lot of people who are in their late 50s and 60s who don't want to admit that they're in their 50s and 60s, which means they're trying to keep up with the cool kids, right? 20 years ago, that meant that they would have got an earring. 10 years ago, that meant that they would have got a tattoo. But now these people have to pretend that they are right on the front lines of the craziest, wildest stuff in the world to do with uh, climate, transgenderism, pronouns, you name it, right? And these people are the types of people who run and work at the New York Times, which is why the New York Times, just like the ABC here in Australia, just proves itself to be ridiculous when it tries to connect the debate about same-sex marriage, transgender issues, all of these things into some vast right-wing conspiracy, which of course is all about invoking Hillary Clinton from the 1990s, because they're old enough to remember. Mm -hmm. No, it's there's a theme with the Times and other left-wing publications here. The story is never about what the left-wing did. It's about Republicans pouncing. Republicans mm. pounce on whatever. They're such pouncers. It's not that there was something <laughs> to pounce on that you did that was really bad on the left. And there's yet another example of that in the press on the New York Times this week, where the headline is, um, defeated on same-sex marriage, the religious right went searching for an issue that would re-energize supporters and donors and that campaign, they say, is transgender rights. Um, I, I think this is actually quite funny. They cite one group, the American Principles Project, that decided this will be a good issue for us to get politicians talking about. Okay, does that explain the millions of Americans who have been activated on this from the left and the right who have never heard about American Principles Project or seen any of its propaganda that it may or may not put out? It's the leftist behaviors around this issue that have motivated people. It is the fact that they are mutilating and literally castrating physically and chemically minors in the name of this false ideology that has animated us. It is seeing things like a six foot one man that now goes by the name of Leah Thomas compete against biological women in the pool and then get out and complain about fairness. What we need is fairness in sports. Would you spare me, preacher, and heal thyself before you start lecturing the rest of us? Get out of the damn pool. Get over with the men where you were 555th. And now that you're a woman, you're number one. Leah Thomas is not a woman. Leah Thomas is a man. Leah Thomas putting on a dress or a woman's swimsuit doesn't make her a woman, him a woman, whatever. And people are starting to catch on to this nonsense. They're seeing people like Riley Gaines, the swimmer we discussed, chased into some room as a kidnap victim because she tries to stand up for fairness in sports. And they've had it. They've seen kids who, instead of getting honest psychological care, only get affirmed. You're right. You are a boy. You're not a girl. You should go on cross hormones immediately. They get sterilized. They, they go right to puberty blockers, right to cross sex hormones, and they are sterile. Not only that, no orgasms for them in their future. Nice. Is that informed consent for a 14-year-old who's going through bodied issues and that's all? What she really needed was a good, honest therapist? No, we're standing up and we're fighting, not because of some stupid group that decided to make a wedge issue out of it, but because the leftists have lost their mind and some of us still have a tether to the truth. Men cannot become women. Women cannot become men. Biological sex is real. If you've got issues with respect to your gender, you can work them out on your own time and manifest them however you want. Doesn't make you a woman. And I'm no longer going to say that it does. A hundred percent. Sing it, sister. Because the, the madness of this, and there's three parts to this, there's three parts to this, right? Is there gender dysmorphia? Is there transgenderism? Yeah, of course. Um, we don't want anyone to be sad, victimized, all the rest of it, right? That's cool, that makes sense. The centering of this group at the culture, that it must be represented at all levels all the time and, and the personalities behind it, like the performance artist Dylan Mulvaney, well, you know, you cannot question anything to do with what they say. The second thing is, as you say, the weakening of the, 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 the attempt to redefine what a woman is. How is this up for grabs? And the third and most important is the kids, again, if a 14 year old has a problem, I'll say, wait till you're 18 and you can do what you want once you're 18. In the same way that you can join the army, you can vote and you can drive a car. That's what pisses people off. The idea that 
we got some sort of secret message from the, you know, the dark forces of the alt-right or the religious conservatives is just It's outright And it is a fever dream of the left that they think they're the free thinkers and anyone who disagrees with them somehow is being, uh, is being controlled by a bunch of lunatics in smoke-filled rooms who somehow control what we think. Where in reality, you're not. You know what? It, it's not even the, the the the. It's not even all of the left. It's the leftists. It's the it's the publications like the Times, because there is a huge percentage of liberal voters that is with us on this. Talk to your average black voter. Talk to your average Hispanic voter who tend to vote Democrat. They are not behind this whole shift in, in gender, and they don't. They too believe that biological sex is real. And while I mean, there's been an evolution on it in our country and. Within myself personally, Paul, I started off being like, I understand, I have empathy for you, I will use your pronouns of choice. You know, I'm not gonna say you're a woman, but you're a trans woman. And now I am realizing that all of those things are gateway drugs to the co-opting of female sports and the word female and the word woman and breastfeeding and childbearing and menstruation, all the things that are under solidly the list of what is a woman? And I'm really done. I'm done. I, I, there is no such thing as a, a, somebody who's born a biological man who is secretly a woman, who, who can become a woman. At best, you are a trans woman. And even that I'm wrestling with. I really am. I don't even really understand what that is. You're a trans person. You're really a biological man who's got some gender confusion issues, and my heart goes out to you. But you're not a woman. You, Dylan Mulvaney, you put on a dress. You, you take a bunch of estrogen to grow something that approximates baby breasts. I don't know what those are. That's, that's not what a, what a woman is. You'll never be a woman. You can have the surgery. Dylan says they're getting bottom surgery. Go ahead, have your penis chopped off. You're still not a woman. Getting a surgeon to cut a hole down there doesn't make you a woman. You don't know the first thing about being a woman. You have no idea what the average woman has been through the course of her life, the challenges we have, the beauty of being a woman, the softness of being a woman, and you never will. You're never gonna have it, doesn't matter how many surgeries, doesn't matter how many hormones, and I'm done engaging in this fiction, Paul. I'm done. I have empathy, I have compassion, but I am not willing to abandon truth in the name of sparing feelings. But also, I mean, you're experiencing, it, you're experiencing in the past week the way this game works, that when you say what you've just said, which is absolutely clear, absolutely coherent, absolutely common sense, absolutely science-based, oh, you're a transphobe. So as soon as you are transphobe, you are slowly but surely depersoned, demonetized, and then in five years' time, someone in the, in the New York Times says, what happened to Megyn Kelly? Yeah, well, that's the beauty of being me. I'm free to say <laughs> what I really think and what is true. What I'm saying is factually and scientifically true. And if they can call me whatever they want, any name in the book, I guarantee I've been called worse and by more powerful publications and people. I don't care. I'm immune to it now. You can't scare me out of what I know is real. And your scare tactics, the left scare tactics have worked so long that they've silenced millions of us, men and women who know what the reality is, who have been engaging in this fiction out of kindness and compassion, because that's how human beings are. But it's been exploited and taken advantage of to the point where our sports are gone, our female spaces are gone. And now the very words that we know are real, like women, are gone. And they're going to be gone forever unless we stand up and fight. So I am ready to do that. And I don't care what they call me, just as long as they listen.